Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I'm bringing you today's word for October 7th, 2021. I'm teaching a series entitled God is Faithful. Now, within that series, I'm teaching a series within the series, right? But from a God is Faithful perspective, I just want to start off by letting you know that God is faithful, that he has never, he would never leave you. He has never left you and he never will. He would never turn his back on you. It doesn't matter what you do. You did nothing to get God to start loving you and nothing you could ever do will ever make him stop. He loves you with an unconditional, unyielding, relentless love. He pursues you down. It is it is the reckless love of God. It seems reckless because it doesn't even seem right that he loves us the way that he loves us and he pursues us the way that he pursues us. The Bible says, even when I trip, watch it now, goodness and mercy are following me. They're tracking me down all the days of my life. God is faithful. All right. So that said, I've been teaching a series inside of the series called You Can Withstand and Overcome Anything. I want you to know that, that you are, God is on you, in you, with you, for you. You can withstand and overcome anything. This is part 18 of the series and the title of today's message. I love talking about what I'm about to talk about today. The God kind of faith. I'm talking about faith, but it's the God kind of faith. Do we get this from Mark 11? But first we got to go to second Corinthians chapter four. That's where we've been for a while. Second Corinthians chapter four, beginning at verse one, the Bible says, now, it's because of God's mercy that we have been entrusted with the privilege of this new covenant ministry, and we will not faint or quit with weariness, right? We're not the people that are going to quit. We're not the people that are going to faint with weariness. We will not grow weary in well-doing. Why? Because we walk by faith, not by sight. Verse seven, we are like common clay jars that walk around with a glorious treasure on the inside. Oh, glory. And, and God set this up so that the immeasurable power that is released through our lives could be seen as God and not us. So it's all about him. Verse eight, though we experience every kind of pressure, the Bible says. Now, as believers, we, we take a lick and, and keep on ticking. We experience every kind of pressure. Whatever the devil throws at us, we're not moved. We're not phased. We are unbothered. We is, experience every kind of pressure. The Bible says we are not crushed. <laughs> Now, at times we don't even know what to do, but we know this, quitting is not an option. Verse nine, we are persecuted by others, but God has not forsaken us. We may be knocked down, but we're not knocked out. Verse 10, we continually share in the death of Jesus in our own bodies, but it's so that the resurrection life of Jesus can be manifested through our own bodies. Now we consider living to mean that we're constantly being handed over to death for Jesus' sake. But it's so that the life of Jesus can be revealed through our humanity. People need to be able to see Jesus in us. And they will see Jesus in us when we're going through challenges and circumstances and storms. And we're doing it unscathed, unbothered, unmoved. Verse 12. So then, death is at work in us, but it's releasing life in you. When you're weak, then you're made strong. Verse 13. We have the same spirit of faith. This is where we are right now. That's described in the scriptures, in the word, where it says, first, I believe. Then I spoke in faith. Well, guess what? We also believe, then we speak in faith. That's where I've been right there. Verse 13, uh, verse 16 says, so no wonder we don't give up. For even though our outer man is gradually wearing away, we have an inner man that is being renewed every single day. Verse 17, therefore we view our slight short-lived troubles in the light of eternity, within the context of eternity. We see our difficulties as the substance that is producing for us an eternal weight of glory. Woo, glory to God, which is beyond all comparison. Verse 18, because we do not focus our attention on the scene, we focus our attention on the unseen. The scene is temporary. What you see with these eyes is subject to change. But what you see in the spirit, what God reveals to you in your prayer closet, that came from the eternal. That is the unseen, and it is not subject to change. I told you I was going to add Mark 11 to this. I, I added Mark 11 before, but let's go back to it again today. Mark 11, beginning at verse 22, New Living Translation. I'm going to read to verse 25. Then Jesus said to his disciples, have faith in God. Now that statement, have faith in God, another translation is have the God kind of faith. And that's what I'm, I'm dealing with today, the God kind of faith. Have the faith of God or have the God kind of faith. What is it? What kind? Of, what is the God kind of faith? Jesus said, well, I'll tell you the truth. 
you can say to this mountain, be you lifted up and cast into, this, into the sea and it will happen. But you got to really believe that it's going to happen. You can't have no doubt in your heart. I tell you that if you pray for anything and you believe that you received it, then you already have it. But when you're praying, you must forgive those that you're holding a grudge against so that your father in heaven will also forgive you of your sins. I'm not going to deal with unforgiveness, but unforgiveness is a blessing blocker. And he was saying, basically, when you're praying, you, you don't want anything to hinder your prayers. So if you have bitterness or unforgiveness in your heart, let it go. I mean, they're not that serious. It's not that important because you don't want anything to slow down your blessing. Say amen to that. So I've already taught you from Mark 11, but let me give you a quick recap and then we'll get into it, right? So um, on the day that Jesus was going to cast out the money changers, he got up early in the morning. The, the Holy Ghost was already showing him what he was going to do that day. He was so motivated by it that he left Mary, Martha, and Lazarus's house. And remember, he was rolling 12 deep. Him and his disciples, they leave. They take off without eating breakfast and they take off. And as they're going, Jesus is hungry. He sees a fig tree afar off. He sees that it has a lot of leaves on it. So he was like, maybe he has some figs. So he goes up, he doesn't see the figs. And, and so he saw something in the spirit. His body was showing him a tree that was strong, full of leaves in the spirit. He saw the tree dried up from the roots. He spoke what the, what the Holy Ghost revealed to him. He spoke the unseen, not the seen. He said, no man shall eat fruit from here from you hereafter forevermore. And he walked away like it was already done. Remember, Jesus only said those things he heard the father say. He only did those things he saw the father do. So he was being led of the Holy Spirit to be able to say that. So he said it the next morning, 24 hours later, they walked by the same tree. And this time Peter's like, oh snap, Jesus, check out the tree. The tree that you cursed yesterday is dried up from the roots. Now, Jesus was not amazed at all. Peter was amazed. Maybe the other disciples were amazed, but Jesus knew that tree was dead when he said it. He walked away like it was already done. And so he took this as an opportunity to teach them about faith. And so this is when he said, hey guys, well, come here, have faith in God or have the God kind of faith. So what is the God kind of faith? What does this mean for you today? I'm going to answer the question. What is the God kind of faith? And I'm going to answer it four different ways. And so as I get into this word, I want you to open up your heart to receive everything God wants you to have as it relates to living by faith. What is the God kind of faith? Four different ways. You ready? Here we go. Number one, what is the God kind of faith? Well, the God kind of faith is faith that openly agrees out loud, like that is agreeing with what the Holy Spirit is revealing to you out loud on earth. As it is in heaven, God has given you a reality from heaven, but what you're seeing with these eyes is a different reality on the earth. And you are agreeing on the earth as it is in heaven, and you're saying it out loud. You're coming in agreement for God's kingdom plans and purposes, which are being revealed to you by the Holy Spirit in the unseen realm. You're coming in agreement for God's kingdom plans and purposes to be manifested on the earth in a way that you can see. Let me say that again. So you're getting input from the unseen, right? That doesn't match the scene. And you have the faith to say out loud what the unseen is transmitting to you so that you can see it in the scene, right? So you're speaking what you're getting in the invisible realm so that it will manifest in the visible realm. So we all know that God wants his will to be done where? On earth. How? As it is in heaven. Well, the God kind of faith is the faith that facilitates that. The God kind of faith is, is seen in humans who have the audacity, first of all, the, 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 the sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, right? You, you have the discernment to know when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and the Holy Spirit is revealing things to you, but then you have the audacity to believe it and to say it out loud, to say what you're seeing in the unseen realm. And as a result, it's only a matter of time once you said what you saw in the unseen realm for what you saw in the unseen realm to manifest in the realm where everybody can see. So it's only a matter of time before everybody else gets to see what God has already been revealing to me, enabling me to see in the spirit, because I have the audacity to set my faith in agreement with it and say it out loud. See, when God finds a, a, a human on this planet that has the audacity to say what heaven is revealing, right? That human becomes a human conduit of the divine. Uh, that human becomes a conduit through which heaven on earth is manifested. That's why that, you know, that's how Jesus lived. Jesus was walking around and he was pulling heaven down to the earth 
on a daily basis. He was causing the blind to see, the lame to walk, the dumb to speak, the dead to live. Why? Because he was looking at things from an earthly perspective. At the same time, he was looking at things from heaven's perspective through the Holy Spirit. And then he had the audacity to set his faith in agreement with heaven and not the earth. And as a result, heaven was manifested on the earth. That's how we're supposed to live. So as I close out this first point, let me just, I've told you this before, but it's worth repeating. Listen, if you're born again, you're going to heaven. I know that there's some people uh, that just live their life with like a payday someday mentality, right? They live their life with like, you know, one glad morning when this world is over, I'll fly away. And they're focused on going to heaven. And so they're, instead of focusing on living every day of your life, focused on going to heaven, the goal should be to live every day of your life, bringing heaven to the earth, right? So the goal is to bring heaven to the earth. Now, I know I'm going to heaven, so that's not the issue. When I die, I'm going to heaven. I'm just going to graduate this moving day. But for now, my goal is not to live focused on, well, one day I'm going to go to heaven. No, the goal is to bring heaven to the earth every day. Say amen to that. All right. Number two, same question. I'm asking you the same question four times. I'm just going to answer it a little bit different. What is the God kind of faith? So this is the faith that publicly declares what the father is revealing to you, even when it goes against all human logic and reason and common sense. It is illogical. It is unreasonable and it is nonsensical. For Jesus to talk to a tree, that doesn't make any sense, right? And so, so the Father will lead you to do things at the risk of looking foolish. The Father will lead you to do things even when it doesn't make any sense. So p- people that operate with this kind of faith, they have the faith to say what God is saying to you, even at the risk of looking foolish, knowing that if God doesn't do it, it's not going to get done. Right, So this can apply to your health, to your finances, to your career, to your marriage, to your business, whatever. Right, This is the type of faith that believes God and then takes God public, even though, let me be very clear about what I'm saying. Even when God is telling you to do something that you can't do and actually even do something that doesn't make sense or even do something that is humanly impossible. So when you say it, you know, like, and I've been there many times, where, where God is leading you to do something and you say it and you walk away like, oh my God, I can't believe I just said that out loud. People heard me. Oh God, please don't let me look stupid. If you don't do it, it won't get done. Like it's one of those kind of situations, right? So this leaves you completely vulnerable. God wants to know, are you willing to be vulnerable to the point where you are willing even to look stupid? Like if it doesn't happen, like, I mean, like, will you have... Do you have the courage to say out loud what God is leading you to say or to perform actions based on what God is revealing to you in your heart, even though you know you can't do it, even though if if God doesn't do it, it won't get done. That leaves you completely vulnerable. Jesus walked away from the tree like it was already dead. But at the same time, he knew that he couldn't make that tree dead. Right. As a human, he was a human conduit of the divine. So so you got to walk away knowing that, listen, Jesus walked away fully believing that the father was going to make the tree dead. And so there are some things that God will lead you to say and to do. And you walk away like, oh, my God, if you don't do it, it can't get done. And but when you exhibit this type of faith publicly, publicly, right at the risk of looking foolish and you are completely vulnerable. Oh, my God. God, you asked me to say, OK, fine, I'm going to say it in faith. Now, if you don't do it, fine. I guess I'm just going to look stupid. But, 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 but I, I, I don't know. I just, I, you're telling me to say it, so I'm going to say it. And, and when, you, when God finds somebody that is totally reliant upon him like that, that is willing to be vulnerable at the risk of looking foolish, I believe our father is, is pleased from heaven. I believe our father can look down and say, that boy right there, my son, my daughter, she believes me. He believes me. He believes me to the point to where he's really putting himself out there that if I don't do it, it won't get done. And so this is the type of faith that God is looking for. And take it from me. I've been there many times. And watch it, watch it. Now, God loves you so much that when he finds that you are at that point, when he finds somebody that is willing to take faith to that level, 
I call it crossing the faith line where you're out there so far that if God doesn't do it, it won't get done. I'm telling you, take it from me. I'm a witness. God will never let you look stupid. God is not going to do that to you. God is going to be like, oh my God, I, my son, look at that. He put all his trust. He put all his confidence. My daughter, she put all her reliance on me. She's out there talking faith. Go, oh man. She's, I, I can't let her look stupid. She's talking about me. And so let me manifest this thing for him. Let me manifest this thing for her. You provide the faith. God will provide the power. God is looking for that type of faith in the earth. Now, I feel led to just say this as a warning. Say warning. Let me just give you a quick warning. God is watching over his word to perform it. That's Jeremiah 1 and 12. But to be clear, God is not obligated to back up anything you say, right? God is only obligated to back up what he says. And so when you say what he says, now, yes, he's watching over his word to perform it. So God will back you up because you're speaking what he is speaking to you. But when you say stuff on your own and you just come up with your own stuff in your own heart, God is not obligated to perform your word. Let's, let's be clear about this. God is only obligated to perform his word. He obligates himself to his word, not to your words. And so, so when your words are his words coming out of your mouth, then yes, he will perform it. But when your words are your words that you came up with on your own and you're just saying stuff, then watch this. If it's his word coming out of your mouth, God will never let his word return to him void. But when it's your word and you just come up with whatever you want, and this is where it gets dangerous. This is why I said warning, warning, warning. This is where it gets dangerous. If you just come up with something, you want it. Oh, I saw this Rolls Royce. Let me take a picture of a Rolls Royce. I'm just using this as an example, as a dumb example, but you put it on your fridge. I, God, you got to give me this. I declare. And then you add in Jesus name to the end of it. And then you try to get some scripture. Say, God, you give me the desires of my heart. And then you, I decree and I declare, I name it, I claim it. And I, it's mine. Even now, God has to give, let's stop. If God led you to a Rolls Royce, he can give you 12. I could care less. God doesn't care about that. God, he can give you whatever, whatever. That, that's not the issue. The issue is if he never led you to do that, don't think that he has to do what you say. That would be the tail wagging the dog. Just because you find something and you come up with it and you grab it and you grab a scripture to justify it and then you add in Jesus name to the end of it and then you say it out loud and I decree and I declare. That doesn't mean that God has to give it to you. God is not obligated to give you your words. God is obligating himself to his words. Faith is not about you trying to get God to put a yes on your plans. Faith is about God trying to get you to put a yes on his plans. And so faith is about surrender. Faith is about agreement. Faith is about coming in alignment with God and say amen to that. All right. Number three, I had to explain that because some people misunderstand that. Once again, the same question. What is the God kind of faith? All right. Well, it's the faith that walks away from prayer without any sense realm evidence to support what you just said, <laughs> fully believing without a doubt that that prayer shall come to pass in the fullness of God's time, right? So this is a person that operates in faith and is not moved by what you see in the natural. Jesus was not moved by the fact that when he spoke to the tree, seemingly nothing happened. So a lot of people today, they would stay there and they would like call it. And if it's not moving, they'll call it again. And if it's not moving, they would, what we used to call tarry, they will tarry in the Holy Ghost and like, you got it, you got it, you got to move. Listen, things are not always going to happen instantaneous. Jesus spoke to the tree and he walked away like it was already done. Now, in the natural, it didn't look like anything was happening, but Jesus believed that there was something happening. See, this thing, things are happening even when it doesn't look like it's happening if you're living by faith. So we're called to pray in faith from a believing heart, say what God said, believe what God said, and even if it doesn't look like it's working, if we're in faith, we know that it's working, even when it doesn't look like it's working. Remember when Jesus was talking about the, the uh, this is how faith works. There's a farmer. He sows seed in the ground. He walks away. He doesn't have to have a degree in agriculture. He doesn't need to know how the seed is working. He just needs to know that it's working. And whether he's sleeping or whether he's awake, the seed is always working. There's something happening under the ground, even though he can't see it. So when you are standing in faith and God gave you a word, it's always working. You may not know. Uh, you may not see it, but you got to believe that God is always working. Say amen to that. Number four, and finally, last thing, same question. What is the God kind of faith? Well, the God kind of faith is found in a person who is so convinced by God that like, I, I'm not trying to convince God, God convinced me. And so you are so fully persuaded by God that you speak what God revealed 
and then you never speak against it. You never speak a contrary word ever against the promise. You never speak against the promise of God. This person understands the power of words. If you really believe, I've taught you in this series that God said, God said, God said, and God saw everything that he said. If you really believe that God created everything that you see with words, God created the world with words. God framed the world with words. If you believe that God created everything that you can see with words and you believe in the power of words and you believe that the power of death and life is in words, then you will never speak a word against the promise. You will never speak not one contrary word. You will never speak against what God said because you know that you'll be canceling out your prayer. You have words of prayer in your prayer closet and you reinforce your words of prayer with words of faith. I reinforce my prayer life. I pray and then I reinforce what I prayed with my words. I'm speaking life and not death. I'm speaking blessing and not cursing. There's a space between the promise and the performance right? There's a space between the confession and the completion. And in that space, after I said, I believe I receive amen, but it may not happen until here. In that space, I'm speaking the word only. There's a space between the confession and the completion, right? So I just decree that I declared it, but there's a space between me saying it and it happening. What do I do in that space? I'm speaking life and not death. I'm coming in agreement. I'm never going to speak a negative word against it. I'm going to say what God said until I see what God said. I, I believe God. I don't have a doubt in my heart. I'm openly declaring what God is decreeing to me. I'm operating in the God kind of faith. And then Jesus taught in Mark 11 that you are a whosoever and you will have whatsoever you say. If you believe and you receive it, you decree it. You're praying in faith. You're, you're coming in agreement with what God said to you and you're praying and you're touching and agree. Matter of fact, Jesus Jesus spoke nine words to a fig tree. And then basically he said, guys, let me use that as a lesson on prayer. Jesus was saying that that nine word, no man shall eat fruit from you hereafter forevermore. He was saying, that's a prayer. That's a prayer. When we do these de declarations of faith at the end of, of today's word, that's a form of prayer. It's saying, listen, I just spoke to it. Now let me teach you on prayer. I just spoke to it. Now let me give you an object lesson on prayer. What was Jesus saying? That's a form of prayer. When you come in agreement and you speak what God is speaking to you and you set your faith in an agreement on earth as it is in heaven for heaven to be manifested, that is a form of prayer. Say amen to that. Let's close this message out with this kind of prayer. Well, let's close this message out with you speaking words of faith from a believing heart. Lift up your voice and say this. Say, Father, this is a season of leveling up for me. I level up by speaking the language of faith daily. Every day of my life, I want to be more and more like Jesus. Jesus spoke to a fig tree, fully believing that what he said will come to pass. And he walked away like it was already done. <laughs> so I live the same way. In my prayer life, I pray like Jesus prayed. I spend time with you. You reveal things to me. I set my faith in agreement on earth for those things to come to pass as it is in heaven. I take you public. I openly declare my prayers, even at the risk of looking foolish. I believe I receive when I pray. I overcome fear, doubt, and unbelief. I have the God kind of faith. And I live this way every day. This is how I know greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. This is today's word, so please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. Click on the big red subscribe button so you can get my notes. You're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. Listen, do me a favor. Two things. Share this message right now on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. And then go uh, into the chat and leave me some comments in the chat if this message was a blessing to you. Have the God kind of faith. This is a message you might need to get down in your heart. Listen to it again if you need to. Have the God kind of faith. This is how we're supposed to live. I love you. God loves you more. I'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless you.